morning, Mr. Randall. Good morning. I'm sorry to call so early. No problem, sister. Uh, as you see, I'm an early riser. Uh, can I get you some coffee? Uh, no, thank you. But please make some for yourself while I tell you what I'm doing here. Okay. We need help, Mr. Randall. Mine? If you'll give it. Give? Oh, a way of putting it. There would be a fee, of course. What's the problem? We are not a rich institution, Mr. Randall, but we have found it worthwhile in the past to employ a professional accountant. Last quarter, we took on a new man. And? I am quite sure he's diverting our funds. How much? In the past two months, several thousand pounds. This is a job for the police, sister, and they wouldn't thank me for being involved. But we don't want the police, Mr. Randall. At a meeting last night with the Mother Superior, we decided... It's not really your decision, sister. This is theft. Of our money. Listen, Mr. Randall, naturally we would like to recover the money, but we will not be responsible for sending a man to prison. I see. So you'll take the job? I'm thinking about it. The man's name is Kershaw, Douglas Kershaw. These are the amounts taken and the approximate dates. Total 6,000. I'll go and see him. Not quite yet, Mr. Randall. I would like you to have the full facts, the accounts. When can I pick them up? Tonight, at the convent. Okay. St. Ursula's. Take the main road through Winchester towards St. Cross. We're situated on the right, just through the town. Uh, wrought iron gates. It's quite easy to find. What time? Could you be there at 9.30? I'll be there. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Thank you very much. Just made it in time. Oh, yes, what for? Lunch? To miss the storm. Late night. Nothing special. I overslept. Oh, I called. 
you. When? This morning? Last night. I called several times. Either you were very late or very early. Was it important? Could have been. Someone was trying to contact you. So I gave them your address. Oh, I see. I need to borrow a car tonight, Jeannie. Can I take yours? Oh, what's wrong with yours? It's broken. Broken? Yours was broken last week. No, last week it was the front. This week it's the back. Anyway, the garage won't let me have it back till I've paid the bill. Oh, Jeff, what's it for? Business or pleasure? It's what for business or pleasure? Marty's car. My car. Business, Jeannie. <laughs> Jeff, of course you can. Thanks, Jeannie. No, Jeff. No, over my dead body. Be reasonable, Marty. I need a car. Yes, Jeff, but not mine. The way you drive a car, you ruin it. What's wrong with my driving? Just because you used to drive a 20. Anyway, what difference does it make? You'll never use it again. Yes, well, I still feel it's mine, that's all. Even if Jeannie does use it. Well, that won't last for long. She's thinking of trading it in. Trade it in? Well, why not? It's shot. Shot? It's got years of life in it. Now, be reasonable, Marty. Just look at the state of it. It's practically a write-off. Anyway, Marty, I've got to take it. All right, Jeff. All right. But I'm coming with you. Well, please yourself. I always talk to myself. Jeff, you're pushing it too hard. Don't crash the gears, Jeff. Jeff, you're driving on the brakes. Marty, you drive. Look at the oil pressure. Start worrying when the doors fall off, eh? Hold it, Jeff. There's someone there. I thought it best to meet you here. It is against the rules of our order to have a man in the convent. Of course, sister. Could I also ask you to turn off your lights? It's almost time for Vespers. Oh, sure. These are the figures. I don't think they leave any doubt as to what Mr. Kershaw is up to. Now, let's get this straight, sister. You want me to go and see Kershaw and recover the money from him? That's right. What if he spent it? Already? Six thousand pounds? Oh, it's possible. I could do it. Then we forget the whole thing, Mr. Randall. We put the loss down to experience of the world. I still think this is a job for the police, sister. Definitely no, Mr. Randall. Now, I think I've explained everything. You'll do your best. I will. Thank you. Best of luck, Mr. Randall. Best of luck, Mr. Randall. What's wrong with that? I don't know. It just didn't sound right for a nun. I thought they believed in providence, not luck. You're still touchy about the car, Marty. And another thing. Since when did nuns wear eye makeup? Eye makeup? Well, you don't think all that was natural, do you? The long lashes, the soft, limpid look. Marty, she was just a very good-looking nun. There's nothing more sinister than that. Come on. It just didn't ring true to me, Jeff. Vespers? Well, let's hope so. Come on, Jeff. Let's get out of here. I'm beginning to think you were right, Marty. Jeff, look! Point of me staying, Jeff. I'll frighten the dogs. Marty! Marty! All right, get him out. 
Get him out. Out. Well, where is it? Where's what? I've no time to waste playing games. I want to know where that envelope is. You're quite sure? Oh, yes. The car was reversing down the drive without lights. Well, I don't know that that's conclusive. Well, if that isn't, this is. We found it on him. D. Kershaw, 2,000 pounds, 1,000, 3,000. And the date. What do you have to say about this? I told your man here. I got it from a woman who hired me to do a job. He keeps telling some story about a, a nun and this place being a crooked convent. Kershaw was supposed to be the accountant. I see. All right, let's go back to the beginning. Your name? Listen to me, Mr... Yateman's my name, Philip Yateman. All right, Mr. Yateman. I came here in the belief that this place was a convent. I asked you for your name. I want to know who you are, where you come from, and why you were trespassing on our property. Then get the police in, or let me go, one or the other. Let me make it clear to you that you're in no position to dictate terms. That's clear. I want him shut up for a while. Put a guard on him. Get up. Now's your chance, Jeff. The dog's around the other side of the house. I said, get up. Get ready, Jeff. Close the windows. Locked. Try the window. Come on, Jeff. Come on, follow me. Jeff, quiet! Run for it, Jeff. I'll try and hold the dogs. Think you can? any good, Jeff. It'll need a service after this. We should be safe enough now. Shall we find out what it was all about?
Marty, just listen to me. There's not going to be any next step. You mean you're going to pass the whole thing up? As far as I'm concerned, it's an unpleasant incident and it's over. Finished. Aren't you even curious to know what it was all about? Look, Marty, perhaps these mundane concerns don't worry you anymore. But I've got the rent, rate, electricity bills to pay at the office. I've got a car in the garage and it's going to cost me 26 quid to get it out. All right, Jeff, all right. So you want a paying job? Right. So I don't care if I never see Mr. Philip Yateman and that phony now ever again. Well, let's hope they feel the same way about you. And, a, and another thing, Jeff. Oh, Marty. Look, I'm dead tired. I just want to get the kit, right? All right, Jeff. All right. I was just going to talk to you about my car. You gave it quite a beating last night. I think the garage should look at it. Yeah, all right, Marty. First thing when I get to the office, I'll see to it. Now, please. Right. I'm on my way. I'm alone. I think I'll keep a harem up here. <laughs> what, another late night? What brought you over? Well, it seemed a better idea than sitting in the office and polishing my nails. Have you finished all the paperwork? Yes, yesterday. And this morning we were going to dictate a report and type a dozen letters, remember? Oh, yeah, I remember. The Winchester job went all wrong, Jeannie. I couldn't help it. Would you like some breakfast? Yeah, why not? Who am I kidding? I'm not going to get any sleep. I'll get cleaned up. Must find that garage. Eggs, bacon, toast, marmalade, right? Fabulous. And coffee. Lots of black coffee. Hello? London Road Garage. Randall, you got my car in there. Look, I want to bring another car around just for a checkup. I know, I know. Well, say I bring half the money around, 12 pounds, and this other car, can I get mine out? Good morning, Mr. Randall. That is the name, isn't it? If you're deciding on some dramatic move, I'd forget about it because you've got a gun in that pocket. It must be your profession. You're devoted to melodrama. Now, I advised against such a course, Randall, because I have a proposition to put to you. You forget I'm in the dark. Is it your proposition? Mr. Yatemans. Ah, the gentleman with the private army and the guard dogs. It's necessary. I'm sure. Well, what is this proposition? It's simply this. You return the envelope, intact, and we call it a day. Call it a day. Forget the whole thing ever happened. It's absurdly generous. Absurdly. Well, what do you say? I told you before, I'm totally in the dark. But you have the envelope. I had it. I sold it. It's a penny a pound. That's the going rate for newsprint, I believe. Newsprint? That's what was in the envelope, Edwards. Neatly cut and folded, but newsprint, all the same. I don't accept that, Randall. Well, that's too bad. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to throw you out. I haven't finished our talk yet. We've finished, Edwards. Don't be rash. We're just going to be moved for parking. I'll see you again, Randall. Good afternoon, sir. Randall, 
Hello, Mr. Randall. Uh, this is my car. Uh, here's um, 15 pounds. And that car over there, security for the rest. I've got strict instructions from the boss. Uh, no, it's OK. It's all been arranged. The boss knows all about it. Thanks a lot. And you wonder why I don't like you driving my car. Genie's car. All right, Genie's car. This isn't the way to the office. We're not headed for the office. Change of plan. I've decided you are right. It's time I had a word with Mr. Douglas Kershaw. Anyone at home? Who do you want? Douglas Kershaw. Then you have found him. Uh, do come in. Nice place. I take it you haven't come to make an offer for the boat? Uh, no. Then let us dispense with the formalities. What do you want? The name's Randall. I'm a private inquiry agent. I wanted to ask you some questions. Is there any particular reason why I should answer them? No, but I'm in a jam. Perhaps you can help, perhaps you won't want to. Gin, whiskey, vodka. Whiskey, thank you. What did you want to ask? Well, let's kick off with your line of business. Thanks. You're not an accountant, I suppose. Oh, I could give you a whole list of things that I am not. It's important to eliminate the possibility. <laughs> I do hope you know what you're talking about, Mr. Randall. I'm getting there. What do you do, Mr. Kershaw? I... I lead a civilized, leisurely life. How do you pay for it? I'm a dealer, Mr. Randall, in information. That covers anything, from a presidential press aide to a police informer. Which end of the scale do you play? You know, Mr. Randall, I do believe you're beginning to overstay your welcome. I'm a dealer in information, useful, saleable information. I buy from anybody. There's more information stolen these days than diamonds. I agree, Mr. Randall, but you forget. I merely purchase information. I do not steal it. There is no case to be made against me. Good day, Mr. Randall. Good day. Nothing. Nothing. He sells information, doesn't give it away. What's the matter, Marty? I don't know. A feeling. What sort of feeling? About Jeannie. I think she needs me. We'll be back in the office in five minutes or so. No. I'd better get back there straight away. You must have some idea. I've absolutely no idea at all when he'll be back. He wouldn't be covering for him, Mrs. Hopker. Well, I've nothing to cover. Because if you were, it could be serious. You see, we have a warrant for Randall's arrest. A warrant for Jeff Mr. Randall's arrest? On charges of breaking and entering. The larceny of certain documents sworn by Mr. Philip Yatman, chairman of Winchester Electronics Research Corporation. Oh, but Jeff Randall's not a thief. I'm pleased to hear it, Mrs. Hopker. 
But we'll be seeing him all the same. Well, it might be hours before he gets back. We can wait. I'm sorry, Jeannie. I'll have to be going. A warrant? Sworn by Yateman. The last night must be. Looks like it. You can see what's happening, can't you, Marty? They're setting me up. I've been used as a mug, a full guy. By that nice, unsinister, good-looking nun. So what do we do now? How do you spend your last hours of freedom? Driving. To Winchester. They're the only electronic research centre that doubles as a convent. Yes, I'd like to see Mr. Yateman. And before you ask, no, I haven't got an appointment. I'm afraid he doesn't see anyone without an appointment. He'll see me. The name's Randall. I'll ring the security officer. Security officer. Why not? I must say, I didn't expect you to turn up. You know there's a warrant out for your arrest. I'd sooner see your chairman than the police. Persuade him to withdraw the charge. Something like that. This way. Come in. If you don't mind, I'd like to speak with Mr. Yateman alone. That's all right, Edward. Well? It's good of you to see me, in the circumstances. It doesn't mean that I believe your highly improbable story about convents and nuns. All right. As long as you realize it could have been made improbable for just that purpose. I don't follow you. Well, nuns, convents, who'd believe it? Exactly. But if I was being framed, it would make sense to someone to make my story as improbable as possible. I don't go along with that, Randall. We've lost valuable research material on four occasions. We know the information passes to a man named Kershaw. His card was in your pocket, marked with sums of money. Presumably the amounts he paid you for the information. And I've told you the improbable story of how he got there. Now give me a break. Let the police tackle him. Don't you see? This isn't a matter for the police. Kershaw only buys industrial guidelines. Information that can save another company thousands in wasted time and effort. I see. The police can only act against the thief. You. The man we caught here on the night of the last robbery. The man who had Douglas Kershaw's card in his pocket. I've explained how I came to be here. But not to my satisfaction, Mr. Randall. Can I ask you a question? Before I call the police? Yes? Yeah? I had a visit from Edwards this morning. With, I thought, a very generous proposition. Maybe. But what I want to know is how he traced me. Last night I told you nothing. The only person who could possibly know my name and address was the nun that hired me. You're forgetting your car. You were traced from the registration number, I understand. I see. And if I told you now that I was using someone else's car, would you at least consider that your security officer already knew my name? No, Randall, you won't wriggle free by hurling accusations into thin air. Whose car is that? The sports car? Yes. It belongs to our personnel manager, Miss Holiday. Why? She seemed familiar. Not another accusation, Randall. Okay, Yateman. I'm leaving. I'm going to walk out of here. I won't stop you. That's a job for the police. Give me the police. Don't you have a car of your own? Sure. So you have two. One's enough to trouble and expense. The other car belonged to a friend. The other car? The one you claimed to have traced me from. You slipped up, Edwards. You already knew where I was. I'll be back. You're a tough customer, Randall. 
You're causing everybody quite a bit of trouble. If you want a word of warning, don't keep it up. I don't like it, Jeff. I don't mind telling you. Look, Marty, I need a witness for this. You won't do. I know that. But it could be unpleasant. I don't want Jeannie being upset. Well, nothing's going to happen. I'm simply going to ask Kershaw to make a statement that I am not and never have been involved. And if he refuses? Well, why should he? Listen, Jeff. If Jeannie gets hurt... I hope I haven't kept you, Jeff. The police have been at the office again. Again? Look, Jeff, I'm very worried about you. All right, Jeff. If you two are going to care, Shores, you'd better get going. May we come in? Oh, yes. Well, do sit down. Thank you. I've come to ask you a favor. Well, that is at least straightforward. Now, there's said to be a certain value in honesty and plain speaking, although I never saw it myself. It's like this, Mr. Kershaw. I discovered today I'm being framed. Only today? You mean you know? As soon as you started your questions this morning. But do you know who's doing it? No. But it always happens in this business. You see, somebody sells me their company's secrets. They get too greedy, take too many risks, reach a point where apprehension is certain, unless they can rig it so that someone else gets the blame. It's that much of a pattern. Almost completely predictable. Well, then you can help. The police have a warrant out for my arrest. You can swear that I never, at any time, sold you information. Uh, but tell me, Mr. Randall, why should I be so accommodating? You won't? I don't see why I should. But it's the truth. <laughs> what innocence you both are. It's the truth that man's the nastiest animal since the Tenodosaurus Rex. But no one suggests we should hand over control to the antelopes. I think it's time we had a more serious discussion, Kershaw. Go home, Jeannie. But you wanted a witness. Not now, I don't. Jeff. Jean, go home. Look, I... <laughs> You're my last chance to avoid going to jail, Kershaw, and I'm going to take it. You're going to make that statement to the police. I want that statement. N no. It it's more than my life's worth. So you're in it too. You're part of the frame. I suppose there's evidence to show that I came here this morning to sell the secrets I stole last night. All right, I know about the girl, Miss Holiday. Who's she working with? Edwards? No, Mr. Randall, not Edwards. You'd have done better not to have scratched around so deep, Randall. To have crawled up to jail quietly. Maybe. I spent ten years in Japan studying industrial methods. I studied some of their combat methods, too. It didn't do you much good in the office the other day, Yateman. Don't let that fool you, Randall. Let's get him out of here.
Make our way round to the house from the back through the storerooms. What about Edwards and the guards? I know the patrol time, so we should make it okay. Don't spoil it, Randall. You're about to become instrumental in making me very, very rich. You don't look short of a few pounds as it is. Company chairman's pay and the 6,000 extra you got from Kershaw for selling the research material. You're doing all right, mate. It's nothing, Randall. Just a few files, a few extra pounds. No, by tomorrow we'll have all the company's research material in our hands. I wouldn't hesitate to value it at half a million. Oh, don't tell me. Well, I'm going to get the blame for that little hole. Shouldn't worry you, Mr. Randall. Why, have I suddenly been afflicted with a spirit of self-sacrifice? No, Randall. You just won't be worried about anything anymore. Now, get up. You can make yourself comfortable here, Mr. Randall. Aren't you going to tie me up? No, that won't be necessary. You won't get out of this storeroom. This is valuable equipment. There's a very strong lock on the door. I could surprise you. You might do better to kill me now. Not until success is certain. No, oh, nothing will go wrong, but uh, I can see no sense in risking a longer prison sentence until I have to. Shout as much as you like, no one can possibly hear. When can I expect you back? Perhaps I should let you suffer the agonies of waiting. But I won't. 24 hours, Mr. Randall. Just 24 hours. You've got it all worked out, haven't you? Yes, Mr. Randall, I have. Where have you been? I wasn't going to come at all tonight. Jeannie was very upset when she got back. Look, with all due respect, forget Jeannie for a moment. Marty, I'm in trouble. Yateman's making me the fall guy. Yes, well, we knew that already. Well, you don't understand. A permanent fall guy. You mean? <laughs> well, he gets away with half a million pounds worth of research material. He'll never get away with that. I don't care. You've got to help me, Marty. Jeff, what can I do? You know I can't touch anybody. No, I know. Think of something. As a matter of fact, Jeff, I have got a, a sort of idea. Let's hope it's a good one. Otherwise, in 24 hours, I'll be joining you. Well, this isn't good. It's too much blood. Second swab. Stand by with another. Forceps. It's leaving, it's leaving. He's going. Pulse, stop it. Emergency resuscitation, quick. What's happened? Don't worry. Don't get upset. Everything's all right. You're dead. Dead? Dead. That's you on the table. It's not. And you? Oh, I see. You've come to fetch me. Where do we go now? Oh, no, you've got it all wrong. I'm not here in an, an official capacity. No, I want you to do me a favor. A favor? Yes, they're going to save you. You're going back. Oh, what do you want me to do? Phone the police. 
get them to search the storerooms at the Winchester Electronics Research Corporation at Winchester and to contact Edwards, the security officer. Have you got that? Uh, yeah. Winchester Electronics and Mr. Edwards, yeah. Good. And don't forget, kick up a fuss immediately you come round. Because by the time the anaesthetic wears off, you'll have forgotten all about this and me. Yeah. What's happening? I feel funny. Oh. I think you're on the way back. Now, look, are you sure you've got it? Yeah. Phone the police. Search the storerooms at Winchester. Winchester Electronics Research Corporation. Edwards. Have you... Heartbeat started again. Breathing's weak but steady. That's the worst over. Should be all right now. Don't you forget, that's all. Just don't you forget. Hours. But it wasn't easy, Jeff. I had to find someone in the right condition. Condition? What condition? It seemed to go all right, too. Mind you, I shall have to check. What are you talking about? Jeff, I haven't got time to stop and explain. Now, if he goes and forgets, I shall have to start again. Forget what? Start what again? Marty! Marty! Change? No, sister. How is he, nurse? Go in. Give me half an hour. He's very restless. Has he said anything? No. Are you sure he hasn't asked for a phone? Oh. A telephone. I want a telephone. He seems to be coming round. Come on. Come on, wake up. There's nothing wrong with you. You did a great job there, Doc. A telephone. I want a telephone. What did he say? What's the matter with you? Are you deaf? I think he said telephone. Of course he did. He almost shouted it. But don't just stand there. Give him the telephone. Uh, he must be delirious. He seems very upset about something. Perhaps the sedative. Yeah, no, not yet. Yeah. What shall I do, Doctor? Uh, just wait. wait. Uh, look, you'd better let him have it. Uh, might quieten him down. He's dialing. Nine. 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 <laughs> We've got him. Yeatman? Yes. And the girl. I've been watching them ever since you told me about not using your own car. Now well, the police got onto them, and now they knew you were in this storeroom beats me. I suppose they want me to explain that. Of course. <sighs> That's what I was afraid of. Ah. Won't be long now. A couple of weeks, we'll have you home. I feel great. So you should. The operation was a complete success. Though I don't mind admitting now that we had a few anxious moments. Oh. As a matter of fact, you demanded a telephone as soon as you came round. A telephone? <laughs> yes, a telephone. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, no, you wouldn't. I told you that. Well, you were still under the effects of the anaesthetic, of course. Did I ring anyone? You dialed 999. The police? Yes, you sent them down to um, Winchester, wasn't it, sister? Yes, Winchester. It's a wonder I haven't been arrested. 
We hung up for you. You quietened down after you made the call. We thought it better not to say anything. Thanks. I'm very grateful. And so am I. A small gift to show my gratitude. Yeah. I can't explain now, but uh, perhaps you'll understand one day. Come in, Marty. Yeah. Thanks, mate. I've enjoyed talking to you. Thanks again. Who was that? I've no idea. Doctor? Hmm? The shop. Harling's Greengroceries. Winchester? He looks well. He does now. <laughs> <laughs>